Welcome to the St. Joseph Radio Presents live program broadcasting to you from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. The program that for over 30 years has brought you eloquent speakers from across the globe to help explain, clarify, and evangelize the Catholic faith. Our program covers a variety of topics relating to current issues and occurrences in our daily lives. Now, with the aid of technology, we are able to bring the gospel message to the four corners of the world, where Christ himself did say, those who have ears ought to hear. It is our hope at St. Joseph Radio that through these programs, we can help evangelize the world and change one soul at a time. Now, here is your host to introduce today's guest and topic. Welcome, welcome. My name is Deacon Tom Burke, and I'm here with my good friend, Allison Hoekland. And today we're going to talk about, and we're going to invite you in around the table where we're sitting, to talk in a real personal and, and sensible way about the Holy Spirit. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and for many people, they, they have a different ideas of what that is, and they may think that that was good back then, but not for them now. We're going to bring the Holy Spirit into, into this uh, program today, and I would ask you before we get in, and I ask Allison a little bit about herself, if you would join me in a, in, in a simple prayer, uh, maybe one of the oldest prayers about the Holy Spirit that we know. It was originally written in Latin, Vine Sancti Spiritus. I did not take Latin, so don't call in and say you mispronounced it, because I probably did. But please join me in that prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be renewed, shall be recreated, and ye shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you very much for joining us today. Many of you may think, oh, I know a lot about the Holy Spirit. I, I think that's probably true. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, and we talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit every time we make the cross. And we, and we also uh, kind of remember every time we dip our hands in the holy water, our baptism. So we're going to talk about that, but today I'd like to start out by inviting my guest here, Allison Hoagland. She is a dear friend of mine. We've been together for a couple of years in ministry, and, uh, and, and I think the world of her. But Allison, would you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and, and what's going on, maybe the church you go to? Thanks, Deacon. Yeah, my name's Allison Hoagland. I'm a parishioner at uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola in Marthasville. Um, grew up in University City in All Saints Parish and um, made my way out to the country uh, about nine years ago. Love it out there. Love my my home parish. Sweet, small, intimate parish um, that, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of good things going on. Um, I work as a Catholic therapist, mental health therapist, and um, have been working with you, Deacon Tom. The, the listeners might not know this. Uh, for the past uh, little over a year doing some healing services, um, just seeing how the Holy Spirit works with us and through us to uh, bring healing to people. Um, we just had a healing service last night at Mary Mother of the Church. And uh, Jesus was there, the Holy Spirit was there, and uh, beautiful service last night. I'm not going to apologize for this, but if it sounds like I'm a little jacked up today, <laughs> if it sounds like I'm kind of just kind of full of full of it, which my wife says I am anyway, but kind of full of it, if Allison sounds a little excited with me, that's because we are, because we've seen the action of the Holy Spirit. And that'll be the focus here today after we kind of get the right reference, where we, where we come together and understand what the church has talked about and trying to reveal, trying to give us the revelation of the Holy Spirit in the world. After we talk a little bit more about that, stay with us on this. Stay with us. Come around the table with us, and you'll, you'll be able to listen more about 
about, about how and think more about the Spirit is working in your life. And so what we're going to talk about today is, is how we can uh, access the Holy Spirit and become accessible, how we can uh, dispose ourselves to the action of the Holy Spirit in us and see the Holy Spirit working through us. And so we're going to, those are going to be fairly concrete ways of talking about, talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But kind of get the right context. You know, the Holy Spirit, uh, we, we've all heard of the Holy Spirit. In fact, when I was a young child, they talked about the Holy Ghost. And they changed it to the Holy Spirit, which I guess is good because I, we all think of, when I was a kid, I thought the Holy Spirit looked like Casper, the friendly <laughs> ghost. But, but it, it is an action. And, and I'm going to ask to start out, I'd ask Allison maybe if she'd be so kind to go ahead and give us the reading the first reading that we'll hear at Mass this Sunday, the Mass of the Day. Absolutely. So this is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there was from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted, And came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded in an amazement asked, Are not these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pythagoria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. Thank you very much, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I... I, I bet that was astounding. Wouldn't that have been great to be, be out there and hear that? To hear that roar, to see that as a tongues of fire came down, to see that it animated those first disciples and apostles to go out and do something. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. The overarching theme today is the Holy Spirit is an animator. Okay, and one of the things we that, that uh, the church fathers and theologians talk about is is to get their heads around the fact that there's three persons in the Trinity: the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They talk about spiration. Allison, what's your idea of that? Well, Tom, Deacon Tom, and I were talking about this before we came on the air, and um, I had never heard the word spiration, but I have learned through my my years of uh, study of the faith that the Holy Spirit is actually um, comes out of the love that God the Father and and the Son Jesus have for each other. That's See, that's wonderful, right? When you think about the Holy Spirit was, and it was there from the beginning. Remember in Genesis, the, 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 the breath of God came across the waters in creation. So the Holy Spirit's always been where there. Jesus and God have always been there. But the Holy Spirit, because of the love between God and, and Jesus that is always there, always interacting, always going back and forth, never static, always, always moving, that, that, that love in and of itself creates, a, in the word they use is spiration, creates the Holy Spirit too. It's not that the Holy Spirit wasn't there before. It's just the Holy Spirit is manifested that way. Man, manifested, what does that mean? Manifested means made present, made, made, made known. And, and how does the, matter, the Holy Spirit allow itself to be made known? Well, we hear about it, right? Isn't that great in the Acts? Uh, so I, I, 
part of me would be a little bit scared, you know? Part of me would be a little bit scared if I was in the upper room. I've been there for nine days. That's where we get Novena, right? Sure. So the, the oldest Novena in the world is the original Novena to the Holy Spirit. But they weren't scared, were they? They immediately, I get the impression that they could barely open the door quick enough mm -hmm. to, to bust through out in and to say what they had to say, not because they were puppets, but because they were filled, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about this today because it's easy to come to Mass. It's easy to come to Mass. It's easy to sit there. And to be in a very receptive posture, I love that, be really receptive. But yet Mass is also an interactive and active. And so we know that when the Holy Spirit is active in us, we, are, we get that unction, we get that, that um, the power in us to, to the grace that causes us to be able to go out and act. So uh, what, ways, what ways do we see the Holy Spirit acting, Allison? Can you tell me just even practical ways that you've seen the Holy Spirit act either in, either in your practice as a counselor or in, in your, which kind of morphs into both is going on, your, your ministry? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always um, listening in one ear when I'm, when I'm with somebody at, at what they're sharing with me. In one ear, I'm listening to the person but I'm also listening to the Holy Spirit in the other ear and just asking him to enlighten me as to what this person needs, um, how to share with this person, um, how to help bring healing to them. Um, so it's, it's a, just a matter of being open. And I mean, the Holy Spirit's always there, right? It's just like grace is always there, but you have to be open to it, to receiving it and to the Holy Spirit working through you. Um, and uh, a lot of that happens in our healing services, too. Um, can you talk, can you, without betraying any, you know, patient-client confidence, uh, this idea, has that all, was that something they taught you in school when you were learning how to be a counselor, to kind of keep one ear open to the, to the promptings of the Holy Spirit in order to help somebody? How did that come about in your learning? No, it did. That is absolutely not part of my secular training <laughs> as a therapist. <laughs> they don't. They do, don't bring God into any of it. Do they use a different word for it though? No, no. It's no. What actually they teach you to um, reframe and listen to somebody and say back what they've said to you, so that they can work through it themselves. Yes, yes. But being a, a person of prayer, I'm always praying and seeing how I can how I can help that person and how the Lord wants to use me to help bring bring healing to the to them. Well I I've I've heard from others and I'm not trying to give you a big head, but I've heard from others that you're a very good counselor, but can you tell me when you started to uh how should I say uh act uh, turn your ear the way you just put it. Turn your ear to the Holy Spirit. And what did that mean for for the people who came to you for counseling and the breakthroughs that you may have seen? Um, you know, I think it just kind of happened naturally being a, a, a person of prayer. Um, but what I found was that I would, a question would come to my mind to ask the person that they hadn't spoken about. And so I, I'd speak into that question and there'd be all this breakthrough, and, and I would recognize later that th there could have been hours and hours of conversation. We never would have gotten to that point. But because the Holy Spirit put that inspiration in me, and I was um, spoke into that, spoke into that inspiration, spoke it out, um, that uh, it moved the, the healing process on quicker, if that makes sense. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, why wouldn't you, and I know how you are, you've got a big heart, we've known each other for a while, and I can see you're saying, why wouldn't I use everything at my disposal in order to bring healing into the world for somebody like this? And and I know that you, that you have, uh, you would never betray a confidence, but you've talked to me uh, and, and talked about that breakthrough that people have been seeing you for a while and, and, and saw incremental benefits to it. 
it. And I would always recommend anybody out there who is wondering about whether going to a counselor uh, would be of any benefit that, that you should seek that out. And, and seek out a counselor, maybe a Christian or Catholic one that could help you in, uh, because they're trying to access God and the Holy Spirit. But so you've talked to me about this and it's wonderful. And I also want to want to break down what what you were talking about if you don't mind for a minute you you were you were available <laughs> you were uh, the, the holy spirit was so accessible that e- even as you were, were splitting your your ears in two your brain in two you were able to listen for the holy spirit but here's the neat part about it is for for what I'm hearing from you is that you went ahead and you trusted in what you received and spoke it into the world. Yes. It, it lines up exactly with what we just read in Acts, if you don't mind me saying, you know. And I'm I, I don't get me wrong, you might somebody out there might thinking, Deacon Berg just called just called Allison an apostle or just called her a disciple. Yes, I did. Because she was baptized, because the Holy Spirit came down in her when she was baptized, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit came into her. You're darn right. She has an equal access, an equal access and availability of the Holy Spirit in her as any of the apostles who had prayed for nine days. Absolutely. And I think that's an important point to make is I'm not any more special than anybody else. I was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I have those gifts, and it's just a matter of me being open to the Trinity working through me. And we all have access to that. Well, I'd, I'd also like to put a little Catholic word on this that we get out of uh, 1 Corinthians 14 when, when Paul is talking to the Corinthians and he's writing to them and he's saying, he's saying here's, here's some of the gifts you'll receive, okay? And he talks about the gift of speaking in tongues. That's a gift that I, I, if, if it happened once, I don't know. I don't really have that gift. But he says that gift is for the person who receives that. But he says, I wish all would prophesy. And I didn't know this program would go in this direction, but we're going to talk about it because that's what was going on in the, in the Acts of the Apostles. When they went out and started proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, gospel means good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ into the world to all these different, uh, all these different uh, uh, nations and people who couldn't hear them at all, when they started doing that, they were activated in the Spirit. They, they prophesied. They talked about what was going on. So when you hear, if, if I, am I listening correctly, when I heard you say that you got an inspiration of something to ask your, 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 uh, your patient, your, the person you were counseling, and you trusted it and spoke it into the world? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some of that is... Uh... Just a word, and some of that also can be uh, can be prophecy. And and uh, so we're going to talk about that when we come back after this quick little break. And we're going to say, I want to tell you that you're listening to St. Joseph Radio. That's coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. And we're very pleased that this uh, this apostolate is is a growing apostolate. It's an apostolate that people feel that they can come and be welcomed and participate. And I, I for one, am, am praise God for the people who drug me into this and, and, and have welcomed me wholeheartedly. So, uh, so that... That idea, that, that prophecy, was, when I hear you speaking about it, is a very strong thing that, that you reacted to. And, and let me ask you one more question before we leave prophecy for a minute. Can I ask you, was it about is, is the same the first time you did it as the most recent time you did it? Uh, How is it different? Uh, I think it just gets more, it gets easier. Um, you're courage to speak into something um, becomes easier. It's it's more natural. Um, I'm not so worried now that I'm going to say something that's wrong because, as we know in Scripture, prophecy isn't 100%, right? And, and prophecy isn't for the person given the prophecy. It's for the person receiving it. And, and it's on that person also to discern what that means for them, if it means anything, if it resonates or not. So it's 
definitely easier now than when I first started uh, sharing words. So uh, being able to share those words, and, and they may be something that seems rather innocuous to you, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe even foreign to the conversation that's going on. But when you find that spot, and there's not always a convenient spot, you just have to do what the Lord wants you to do. But when you, when we, when you speak that, uh, how does that make you feel when you're, when you're partnering with the Holy Spirit? How does it make me feel? Um, it, it, that's a good question. I don't even know how to answer that, Deacon Tom. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's a fulfilling feeling to know that you're partnering with the Holy Spirit and that um, you're making yourself available to Him to, to use you to, to help other people. Because it's always about, it's always about building up the kingdom it's always about um, ways that we can uh, glorify God. And um, so to be used as a partner in that, yeah, it's, that's a, a, a gift. Well, that, that's wonderful. And, it, and, and it's a gift that's accessible to us. And I'd like to talk for just a minute now that you mentioned gift, and thank you for leading us that way. We could talk the entire time we have together about prophecy, and we may work our way back to it because it is so, it is so accessible. But one last thing before we leave prophecy. When you heard this, like uh, some type of uh, inspiration mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit because your compassion was there for the person in front of you, I think that's a very important. Uh, in, uh, essential aspect of being able to prophesy is that compassion and love for the person you were trying to help. When you did that, what did the voice sound like to you? Was it like, Allison, <laughs> this is God? No. <laughs> I doubt if God sounds like that anyway. I just had to do something different than my raspy voice. What was it like? For, uh, for me, it's more a knowing and like I said an inspiration where a thought um a question will come to my mind um occasionally there'll be like an internal image um but usually it's just a knowing and that knowing is is comes to you in some type of words like ask the person this or what about this or mm -hmm. Um, and it's, I don't, it's not like I hear, ask the person, ask Tom, you know, this thing about his childhood. It's yeah. just, I, I'll, I'll get a, perhaps a, a situation and then I have to perfectly discern how to bring that into the conversation. Um, sometimes if I, if I've been working with somebody for a long time, I'll just say, you know, I just got this inspiration I'm just going to put it out there, but generally I'll try to ease that into the conversation. Well, thank you for sharing that because there's different ways that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. communicates with you. God works through the Holy Spirit to make sure we are connected to him. It is all about unity. It is always about connection. It's always about the wholeness that Allison's talking about when she actually speaks in the trust of the Holy Spirit that she's received. And sometimes uh, we, we can hear words. Uh, uh, I know that when, when I receive prophecy, sometimes I get words. So other times, it, like Allison was talking about, you might get an image or something. And then other times it's a knowing, which is an extraordinary mm -hmm. gift. I've only had a knowing a couple times. Uh, well, more than a couple times when it comes to the, to the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. But having said that, then we might get a feeling as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is an ex extraordinary gifted person in this where she gets a feeling. And, of course, the feeling is the most scary because... Trusting in a feeling, we all have feelings. Uh, we can have feelings, uh, waves of feelings throughout the day. So being able to trust in that feeling and know that it's that the Lord wants to impart that emotional feeling or that that inspiration that comes from that feeling to somebody else is a little more scary for me than it is to speaking words. But that's an extraordinary way, and I only wanted to mention it for for our viewers and those who have not uh, been like to the renewal. Uh, uh, 
Center in St. Louis where people are, are trained and uh, actually practice opening themselves up to prophecy and to, the, and to that. We'll talk about the Renewal Center some more as we go because that is a great resource that many of us uh, may not know about. Uh, oh, absolutely. They've got a, a new, bigger home. Um, they just moved a couple of weeks ago to uh, St. Dominic Savio in Afton. And uh, yeah, they, they've got incredible programs there. Um, incredible. So, 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 so if I was at a church that, let's say, uh, didn't have that, you know, some churches have more of a, of, of a, of a renewal aspect to them, or maybe even a Jonah ministry that prays for people for healing. Uh, if that, then, then would you recommend that I contact the, the renewal center? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, last night I was talking to Deacon Mark Guilford, who's at, um, ICD, and he said that they are right now currently getting ready to start a, um, life in the spirit seminar, you know, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Emeka Conception, Darden Prairie. And that's just one of the programs that they do at the renewal center, but they have trainings on, how to listen to God's voice, um, how to uh, how to activate the gift of prophecy. They've got all kinds of really plus inner healing. They've got incredible programs. I'm gonna. I want to mention just for a second because um, uh, the the listeners out there come from all different backgrounds. My gra- background is a is a German Irish background, which which means that we would like to go have a beer with you somewhere. But <laughs> but that spiritual background was very contemplative from the standpoint of we didn't really talk about it growing up. It, it's also because of my age, I think, uh, and and we didn't talk about it. my folks were fantastic faithful people, but it was kind of compartmentalized. And if you're out there listening to this program and you go, you know, I'm feeling a little dry. I'm feeling a little like my prayer life is, is, is consistent and it's comfortable and, and, and I, I don't see myself being uh, propelled into any situations that make me uncomfortable or they, I don't see myself being, being inspired by the Holy Spirit to do something else and to, and to reach out to anybody. It just is not me. Well, first, I'd like to say that you might want to take a charism test, and uh, you can go online to many parts ministry and take a charism test and see what charisms are stronger in yours. But by way, that's not a way of giving ourselves a pass. As disciples, you can see that those, those knuckleheads had all kinds of trouble. Uh, we're going to take a quick little break here for a couple minutes, and on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about what it means to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, because that means being with Jesus. You're listening to St. Joseph's Radio, coming from St. Louis, Missouri, and we're going to take a break, and we ask you to come back with us, because we're going to talk about some neat, practical things. Hi, this is Matt Logeman with St. Joseph Radio with a great gift idea, a St. Benedict bracelet, a trendy accessory for men, women, and children that not only looks good on everyone's wrist, but is actually armor for the spiritual battlefield. This unique bracelet is handmade in Europe and contains 10 medals within the braided cord in the adult size and 7 medals in the children's size. On the front of each beautiful medal is St. Benedict holding a cross in his right hand, the object of his devotion. On the back of each medal is a cross. Surrounding the back of the medal and cross are the letters V. R-S-N... M-V-S-M-Q-L-I-V-B in Latin reference which translates Be gone, Satan. Never tempt me with your vanities. What you offer me is evil. Drink the poison yourself. And finally located at the top is the word Pax which means peace. All bracelets come packaged with an informational card and the St. Benedict blessing which your local priest can administer. This gift is for everyone you love and care about, including yourself. Available from St. Joseph Radio. Check the website at www.saintjosephradio.net St. Joseph Catholic Radio is proud to announce the launch of SJEN TV, the St. Joseph Evangelization Network. SJEN TV is a premier online Catholic broadcasting network providing quality Catholic programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have programming such as live studio interviews, St. Joe's Java speaker presentations, current Catholic issues, and the Pro Life series. We're featuring the many talented speakers out of Orange County, California, and this Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri. 
Murray, including Professor John Gresham, Father James Mason, Karen Nokemper, Rick Hollerick, Bill Federer, and many more. To review the program list, go to sjen.tv or on Roku, sjen.tv. All this programming is free, and we are welcoming sponsorship of new programs. Find out more at sjen.tv. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. And in that little break, I just want to let you know that the, uh, my name is Deacon Tom Burke, and I'm, I'm here with Allison Hoagland. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit, and what we've been talking about so far is just one aspect of the Holy Spirit, and that's prophecy and how that relates to her and her counseling sessions with, with some rather astounding and dramatic results. And it's, it, what, what, what we discovered is when we get this inspiration from the Holy Spirit, either in a feeling or words or maybe a knowing or an image that we have to act on it or, or or we'll do nothing it'll just it'll just pass off us like water on a raincoat and so uh, uh let's take a quick look here at at some of the some of the encouraging things that saint paul says about this saint paul talks about about the holy spirit a lot in his epistles but i'd like to direct you and you could do this for your meditation as well direct you to to romans 8 and specifically romans uh, 8 8 and he says those who are in the flesh cannot please god but you're not in the flesh you're in the spirit if the spirit of god really dwells in you Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit who dwells in you. Let's take just a minute out and go ahead and ratify. I want you all out there to be ratified in the knowledge that the Holy Spirit at your baptism came into you just like Jesus. You know, remember that, remember that scene on the, on the Jordan River and John the Baptist said that Jesus was coming to, to baptize in, 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 in the Spirit and fire. And here he is on the, on, on the banks of the Jordan and he goes down in the water and as soon as he comes up, the Holy Spirit comes down and anoints him, it says, like a dove. At the same time, as it says in Mark's gospel, the, the heavens were rent open, which means torn open, okay? Uh, they, we, they weren't for rent. Uh, they were torn open. And then, and then uh, we hear these beloved words. Je God himself says to Jesus, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. So what we discover is the Holy Spirit anointed Jesus at his baptism. That was the same Holy Spirit that anointed each one of us at our baptism. Whether, whether you are Catholic or Protestant, if you have been baptized with water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God and Jesus Christ, but the Holy Spirit took place. And, and as a result of that, the actor in that sacrament is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and it raised Jesus from the dead. What do you think that Holy Spirit could do in you? Let that Holy Spirit, that's a great prayer, Holy Spirit, run a muck in me. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I give myself over to you. You know, we promised to talk a little bit about that, and we heard that in Allison's story, that her docility to the Holy Spirit her, her made herself accessible to the Holy Spirit. So what are some of the ways we can do that? How can we, how can we as faithful Catholics dispose ourselves a little more to having the Holy Spirit come upon us? And Allison was talking about that, the Renewal Center, a little bit, and that's one way we're going to talk about some others right away, maybe in a more rapid fire because of time. But what's that about, Allison? Well, one of the, one of the gifts of the, Holy, of the uh, Catholic Renewal Center is they offer a service where they'll come out to your parish, and they will lead parishioners through a spiritual gifts inventory. And basically, it's seeing where your strengths are in the spirit and that is to identify them for use in growing evangelization in your parish, ways to um, um, that you can be inspired. Um, to me, when, when you recognize a gift of the Holy Spirit, you have a responsibility to respond to that. It, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit aren't given for us. They're given for the community. They're, they're given to build up the kingdom of God. 
Well, that's, that's, that's a beautiful understanding of exactly what Paul is talking about in, in 1 Corinthians 14. And, and, I, and I love what you say that these gifts are, are for, for the, the entire church. Now, let's, use some, let's get our vocabulary right. You hear people talk about charisms. Mm-hmm. Charism is the Greek word for gift. Mm-hmm. So, so we're talking about charisms. And, and uh, if you go into the epistles of Paul, you'll discover many, he talks about many gifts. In Ephesians, 1, 2, 3, and 4, he's talking about other ways, other gifts that come in. Uh, we hear about those gifts that come in, and when they come into us, it's not, it's not forced on us. So really, there's a little bit of an invitation. And Allison's in her office, her compassion, her heart goes out, her, her, she cries out to God in her heart for, for some type of inspiration to help these people see what happened. There was always something. You know, God is always trying to talk to us, but we are responding, and that's that grace that we get to respond as beloved sons and daughters of God, like Jesus responded, and we respond in ours. So that's beautiful to hear but, so what we've been talking about today is a little bit of scripture, a little bit of, of, of theology, the spiration. Mm-hmm. But what I really wanted to talk about today is the everyday access to the Spirit. And, and if I can morph a little bit over to, to something that St. John of the Cross talked about, if I can give you a little quote from him. He said, in the inner soul where meditation leads, the Spirit secretly anoints the soul and heals our deepest wounds. Isn't that a beautiful idea? In this day and age, who wants us to to be at access to the Holy Spirit and who doesn't? Well, of course, God wants us in unity with him, but who doesn't? You know, the evil one will give us what type of spirits? What do you think, Allison? What type of spirits does does he want to give us in order to keep us from connection? Well, all kinds of spirits that are going to Keep us away from our relationship with the Lord, with the, our relationship with the Trinity. Spirits of fear, spirits of control, spirits of doubt. I mean, just he's, he's always planting those seeds so that uh, to tear us away from our relationship with the Lord. And, and all that comes, and we, we know it. I don't even have to talk about it. What am I distracted by every day? How many times do I look at my phone? How many times do I think that my importance is based on my interaction with other people and not my importance with God? I must admit to you that I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a struggle that I have all the time. Um, and, you know, my, I'll be on my phone and my wife will turn to me and go, where are you? <laughs> and I go, I'm not present. I'm not present to the people I love when I'm on my phone often. It's more of a, a self-indulgence. So when we can dispose ourselves more greatly to it. We know the evil one's trying to s- distract it from it. So one of the things that St. Uh, John of the Cross is talking about is in that inner soul where uh, meditation leads. Hmm. You know, one way to, to have access to meditation is just to sit there. And, and, and that's scary, right? I get to have to sit here and I don't walk, watch my phone. And, uh, uh, and, and the times that I've tried to meditate, I better put that phone on silence because the evil one will, will ding me. Sure. The evil one will prompt somebody else to text me. It may be something I need to actually pay attention to, or it may be totally innocuous. But notice who's trying to fight against your unity with God, and that's the evil one. And he is present all the time, distracting us and keeping us from the Holy Spirit. But he's talking about, John's talking about, in that meditation. Well, how do we get, how do we get into meditation, Allison? What do you think? What, what, what are ways do you get into meditation? Well, I mean... Part of it is the discipline of making time for the Lord, and that can be helpful to have a specific space, a prayer space, with less distractions at home or wherever you are, maybe outside. Um, And one of the one of the ways that's a good way to get into meditation is is just through journaling, and and writing down those inspirations that that the Holy Spirit is giving to you. Well, that's interesting. You know, I, I must 
tell you, and I don't know if this is a gender thing or not, but I'm not. I'm uh, many men I've talked to in my spiritual direction with people don't really talk about being able to pick up journaling. But I'll tell you that that the directees I have that have decided to get into journaling, even if it's sporadically, have 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 noticed some great insights, some great connection to God. That that closeness that you feel when you're contemplated by God that He's talking to you. And that's how the Holy Spirit speaks sometimes. Sure. Yeah. I've got one uh, spiritual directee that um, spends a lot of time in adoration and journals during there. And then she brings her journal in and we go through what, what she's written down. And I'm able to give her some insight. And uh, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Well, see, and that's that's also what the Holy Spirit wants to do, right? The Holy Spirit is 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 a third person in the Trinity, but He's never disassociated with God the Father and the, and Jesus. So, since He's always in union with that, so that means that whenever the Holy Spirit is present in the third person of the Trinity, also the two other persons of the Trinity are there too, and they all come with one desire, and that's unity and connection, wholeness and peace, healing that we've just heard about. That's where the healing takes place. Now, I'm not telling you to, to throw out your prescriptions, and I'm not telling you not to not to engage in any type of uh, internet access or throw out your phones. But what Allison talked about is very important, and I don't want to leave it alone. She's talking about being intentional. Mm-hmm. I love what she said. She's talking about being intentional. Are we intentional, or how intentional are we? How intentional are we? Do we do we do we carve out space at the end of our day when everything else is taken care of? Do we do we decide that's when I'm I, I, when everything gets done and all the eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed? I'll give you that time. I'll give you that time, Lord. I'll sit down and I'll listen for what you want to tell me. What is on your heart, Jesus, for me? What is what do you want me to do? If you, if we decide to do it that way, I and if it works for you, thank you. But I bet that's less than one tenth of one percent of all the people who say they want to get close to God. No, we have to be a little more intentional about that. And you know, if, if, if we know how intentional Jesus was, he was always looking to the Father. He was always looking to bring people to the Father. And whether you know it or not, if you're not clergy or or, or not involved in active ministry, you are a shepherd of souls. By the by, the virtue of the of the uh, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by those virtues of, of the uh, faith, love, and and hope that are instilled in you at your baptism, by the virtue of the Holy Spirit's action in the Holy Eucharist, you are disciples, and you are to bring you are to be a shepherd of souls. So, how can we be more of a shepherd of souls? What are some of the things we can do in the few minutes we have left? Let's talk. Let's run down through some of them. What what are some of the things you do, Allison, to, to, to make to help yourself get into that, that reference to make your to help avail yourself and be more accessible to the Holy Spirit? Um, I think like you said, it's just being intentional and throughout the day, not just at the end of the day, not just at the beginning of the day for me, is intentionally asking the Lord what he wants of me in that moment. Um, asking the Holy Spirit how he wants to use me in the moment. I mean, it could be going to Aldi's, right, and pushing your cart down the aisle and and seeing somebody and having an inspiration to, to just say a prayer for that person um, or maybe to say a kind word to that person or to, to smile at that person that um, you just you don't know what's going to come of that. But it's in every, every aspect of, of my day, I try to be intentional um, to see how the Lord wants to use me in that moment. That's wonderful. You know, to be available to be used in that moment is, is something that many of us might, might find a little foreign. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, many of us might say, well, I'll pray for somebody. You know, I'll, I'll pray a decade of the rosary for somebody in silence, away from everybody else, or even adoration, which is adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, which is beautiful. But, I've, but we've been talking about the action of the Holy Spirit this hour. We've been talking about how we partner with the Holy Spirit to get out of our comfort zone. I haven't used that word yet, but it is very, very active word in my life. I constantly or being pushed back into my own personal security, back into my own personal comfort, to, to not stretch myself out and, and, and to act in the Holy Spirit as Alice has talked about. So for just a couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you about how we do that. And one way, of course, that we've talked about is availing ourselves to the sacraments all the sacraments that we're able to avail ourselves to. So many people I know come to Holy Communion, blessed people, lovely people, come to Holy Communion. And yet, they haven't read uh, 1 Corinthians 11, where we talk about coming unworthily. They haven't decided to avail themselves out of humility, to try to match that humility Jesus had by dying on the cross, match that humility that Jesus had in, put, in placing himself into loving himself into that Eucharist, we can match that humility by going to the sacrament of reconciliation. We can match that humility by putting everything aside and going to Mass. And when we match that humility, we open that avenue, right, that space in us sure. for the Holy Spirit to come in. So that, that can be uh, in our own personal prayer life, but also what Alice talked about with the Renewal Center, and now I'm going to segue a little bit into the en Encounter School of Ministry here in St. Louis. This is a new ministry that's just rose up this, this year. We'll start in the fall. It's a school of ministry to uh, teach, equip, and activate people to be disciples, to feel the Holy Spirit, to make them work. Now, Allison was laughing here. Uh, we're not on camera, but she was laughing here a few minutes ago when she talked about, about uh, receiving that inspiration from the Holy Spirit and speaking it to, a, to a, somebody in counseling. Well, I don't know how you all feel, but I'm going to tell you right now, me stopping somebody on clear blue and asking to pray for them, asking for healing, asking the Holy Spirit to come into that relationship because of my compassion for them, they're, they're, even though I've been you know, ordained a clergy, I'm a deacon, a permanent deacon in the Catholic Church, they didn't teach us that in the Catholic school. I, w I wasn't just sleeping the days they talked about that. Uh, they were sleeping other days, but I wasn't sleeping the days they should have been talking about that because they didn't. So this Encounter School of Ministry helps us activate as disciples, teaches us over a course of eight quarters how to do that. That's why Alice and I can go to uh, Mary Mother of the church for 150 people and pray for healing and see and, and just pray for healing simple prayers and see people healed seal see pain removed see backs healed legs healed inner healing uh see all kinds of things like that and and like allison said it gets easier as it goes sure when one of the, one of the things that has been a prayer of mine for the last couple of years since starting in the Encounter School of Ministry, um, is uh, praying for holy boldness, because it is not in my nature to go out and do things like that. And uh, when we ask for those things, then the Holy Spirit's going to respond. I'm going to boldly interject here now and just let you know that we're listening to St. Joseph Radio, come to you from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West, and invite you to tune in oftentimes to the programming here and also the programming Catholic Radio, because it is a way to connect with other people of faith and, and as well as the Holy Spirit. So uh, you were saying, I excuse me. No, you're good. Just that... Um, it, we are all called to be disciples. We're, we're all called, our church has, has, has called us to be evangelists. And like you said, Tom, we weren't taught how to do that. And uh, one of the gifts of Encounter School of Ministry is, as you said, having that activated, the Holy Spirit that's already within us, activated in us and giving us the courage to step out in faith and teaching us, giving us um, opportunities to practice that so that when we fall on our face, we don't feel like a failure. 
And, and you know, the, the Renewal Center, the Encounter School of Ministry, mm -hmm. uh, they're, 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 they're not exactly the same, but they go hand in hand with what sure. God wants us to do. And they provide us a place. And I, I invite anybody here listening to, to, to Google it, find out more about it. Uh, but but they provide us a safe place. And, mm -hmm. and believe me, those disciples needed to be needed to be hand fed by Jesus for three years in their safe place before the Holy Spirit came on them. And we don't need to study more. We just need to act more. And to do that, we have to go to a safe place, a safe place where we're accepted. We get to practice and experiment a little bit with, with, with praying with other people. And then we can go out and boldly do that. I, 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 I know Know, a, a friend of mine who's gone out with me to the parking lot at Target out here on off uh, Mid Rivers Mall, and we've seen people's backs healed, we've seen people's legs healed, but we've always seen somebody encounter Jesus Christ, and in that encounter, we encounter Him. You know, a light bulb is not the light, but a light bulb gets warm the more it's the more it's on, right? And the more we get on, the more we get we get come in contact with Jesus. So, I. I love that aspect of it. I'd like to also uh, 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 tell you one other thing. You know, when we talk about the, f the fire of the Holy Spirit coming down into people and that light that, that, that permeated that, that space when they stepped out of the upper room, so to speak. And St. Augustus has a prayer that I'd like to share with you. His prayer is, O Holy Spirit, descend plentifully into my heart. Enlighten the darkness corners of that neglected dwelling and scatter there, excuse me, and, and uh, scatter the darkness and there with your, your cheerful beam. I'm sorry about that, fumbling a little bit with it, but isn't that interesting how it changes us? If you're out there and you want to be changed, the Holy Spirit's a change the change actor, okay? The Holy Spirit is how God and Jesus and their love manifests the love in the world. If you want to have more compassion for people, if you want to have that inner healing that comes, that's a whole other program that, that okay. Allison could talk about, the inner healing that comes not only from being a disciple, but discipling other people, either in spiritual direction, direction or an inner healing uh, inner healing. Uh, uh, I guess, conferences or, or prayer sessions with people. So just in a little bit of time we have here, let's talk about that inner healing for just a minute, Allison, because I know that's near to your heart. Sure. Um, it, it's interesting because, like, the healing services that we do, it's for physical healing, and um, but we know that we all need inner healing, every one of us, and uh, um, that can tend to be a longer process, um, but the Lord wants all of us to be healed and whole. And uh, one of the words that st stood out to me in that prayer of St. Augustine is the, the darkness, that the Holy Spirit dispels that darkness. And the enemy wants to keep us in darkness. And part of the way he wants to keep us in darkness is he plants lies into our lives. And then when we come into agreement with the lies, we're empowering the liar. And I found in my work with inner healing with people that when they can understand what lies they've come into agreement with, we can renounce those in the name of Jesus, and it breaks that darkness away. And then, and then the Lord can share what the truth is he wants people to know about and to feel and to, to truly understand and, and to live under the truth. And so we walk through a process of declaring those truths that the Lord wants us to to, to live under. But it's, and that's all to me, the, the key to the inner healing is breaking away from that darkness, breaking away from the agreements we've come into with the enemy, with the lies that he plants, and living the truth of who we are as beloved sons and daughters of the King of Kings. That's wonderful. You know, you are called to be as a disciple. I see your discipleship. If you don't mind me commenting, I've seen you over the last couple of years grow bigger and bigger and in, into that ministry of being a disciple. And if you're out there and you go, I don't have time for this. Wow. 
The Lord has all kinds of time for you. The Lord will order your life. Uh, if you'd like to know a little bit more about what a healing service looks like, uh, I invite you to, to Google the Encounter Ministry St. Louis. But also uh, tomorrow, as it turns out, at uh, St. Rose of Lima in DeSoto, uh, Father Roger Fleming will be leading a healing service down mm-hmm. there. And there will be people from the Encounter Ministry who will be able to, who will be able to talk to you about that. I also would direct you with, uh, it, it, with all, hard, hardly to go to the, the uh, Renewal Center to contact Jane Gunther and Absolutely. other people there who have a long history of, of c- contacting uh, Jesus through the Holy Spirit and contacting us with them. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. I'd invite you to come to Mass this weekend to experience the Pentecost that the first disciples did. And I ask you all to pray with me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listening to St. Joseph Radio presents from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to join us in our evangelization efforts, you can order a copy of today's broadcast or any of our past programs by visiting us on our website, stjosephradio.net. That's S A I N T, josephradio.net. Or call us, 636 447 6000. It's all at your fingertips to help us evangelize the world, bringing the good news of Christ to everyone you meet and change one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and support. Until next time, may God bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of St. Joseph Radio Presents.